All right. Let me tell you a story. It's a story about how this person you are seeing now, in her younger years, when she was in her 20s and she realized she would never make it anywhere as a playwright, she became a screenwriter. And then she wrote one story called The Lady is Not Worth London Bridge. And one of the main characters of it was a priest. And this priest got up to some pretty funny antics in his desire to be a good priest to the people in his parish. One of his ways of doing this, he video recorded his altar servers while they were serving mass to show his altar servers the things they were doing wrong while they were serving mass. He treated it like a football game. And one of the things he said to one of his altar servers, who was, he saw, picking his nose while he was on the altar serving mass, was the priest sat down next to the altar server when he showed him the recording and said, Is Jesus up your nose? And the altar server said, No. And the priest said back, Then don't pick at it. Then, and then the rest of that screenplay, I had two other priests be his sidekicks, and they got to some pretty funny antics in their desire to be good priests. I thought I was being original when I did this. Then this freaking thing was discovered by me one day when people were recommending things to see. And I felt the burn very quickly. Once again, here I am, have, thinking I have an idea, and once again, a white British guy, or set of white British guys, thought of it first. <coughs> Why does this keep happening to me? <coughs> Sorry, I'm still sick I'm doing this. Why does this keep happening to me? Literally, I would enjoy some variety with this. I can take other people having the same ideas I had before me, but some variety is the spice of life. How about a person in Asia do it? No, someone, another fellow African-American here do it. Or a, a Mexican female do it. No, it has to always be a white British guy came up with the idea and did it better first. I would feel incredible pain. If it weren't for the fact that fortunately there are a lot of white British guys and black British guys and other cultural British guys that I found massively attractive. That eases the pain of the situation. Yeah, I do not deny. There is one time when I saw Richard Harris when he was younger, thought he was smoking hot and had impure thoughts about him. I did. Think it's strange? Go watch Camelot. He was sexy. Alright, hello guys, welcome, or if you've already seen my channel before, welcome back. I am the Philadelphia Whovian, and for this video, yes, we're talking about that thing called Father Ted. Father Ted, yes. Father Ted is another BBC British show I was told about a long time ago, but I never got around to seeing. And honestly, with all my luck and not getting Region 1 British shows, I was like, there's no way this is going to be Region 1. Finally, I looked it up online, and would you believe not only are there Region 1 copies of Father Ted, but I found this for $4, Season 1 of Father Ted, for $4 and something cents with free shipping. It was glorious. It was holy. It was beautiful. Okay, Father Ted, this is me finally also being able to break into 90s comedy. I believe Father Ted was a 1995 British comedy, correct me if I'm wrong there, centering around the adventures of Father Ted on Crecky Island in Britain. Okay, I believe Father Ted was played by Dormant Morgan. Father McGuire, the other character, was played by Ardo O'Hanlon. Then there's Father Hackett, played by Frank Kelly. Then Mrs. Doyle, played by Pauline McLean, and I believe it was written by, oh, this is the hard part, written by Graham Lynham and Arthur Matthews, and I believe it was, oh, directed by 
Declan something, Declan something, Declan something, Declan Laney or Lonnie, and then produced by, oh god, Jeffrey Perkins? Guys, correct me if I'm wrong, correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section. But the story, I mean, the season one, and then for probably, oh, of course, Father Ted, focuses on, again, Father Ted, and the comedic interest he gets by being confined onto Cranky Island, which is kind of like, with all the, those two other priests, they are on this island because they're kind of in disgrace. They all did something at their parish that led to them being in kind of a like blacklisted amongst priests, and they are therefore confined to Crikey Island. And the comedy is nonstop. This is the exact type of humor I absolutely love. Everything about it. It is wonderful. It is hilarious. And there were times where I was watching it, and unfortunately, I was watching it when I was sick. So every time I would laugh, it it would end in me coughing at the same time. And we've got like you know the one story in the very beginning where Father Ted, there is people gonna come out to see him and put him on TV after they interview him. And they said, where can we go? Cause there are there any like landmarks we can meet you at? He said, and then like the guys go there and like we can't don't know where we are at all. He said, do you see anyone wearing a shirt saying, I shot JR? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Oh, crap. <laughs> what? <laughs> crap, hold on. No, really, hold on. shot JR and the guy says yes and Father Ted says yes you are in the right place then there's the other one I believe the other episode the passions of St. Tibilus or something let me see Tibilius yes where Father Ted and Father McGuire have to boycott this movie because it's a dirty movie with like religious like you know stuff in it but it's a dirty film and by boycotting it they actually give more exposure to the movie and make it the most popular movie scene in the entire island. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay. Okay, then there is in God Created Woman where Father Ted begins to find attraction to a woman and finds he even gets hard ones, active hard ones by talking to her. And I got a story about that. Here in um, Pennsylvania, my mother was once a teacher at a parish where they knew the priest had had a son with a woman who was in his employment. And they were fully aware of this, but they all hid the secret. And not only that, but they, the priest kept seeing the woman secretly on and off. And as the boy got older, because he went to that school that was attached to the parish, parish the boy ended up looking exactly like the priest. I'll never tell you that priest's name. But it's okay, because I actually don't know his name. Mm -hmm. And then there was Grant Unto Him Eternal Rest, where Father Hackett dies. And he has a lot of money he leaves to Father Ted and Father McGuire in his will. But the condition is they just stay in with him overnight before they, he's buried, because he's worried about being buried alive. And too right, because Father Hackett was not dead. He simply had OD'd on some type of cleanser, because he, he loves to drink alcohol. But honestly, he'll drink anything. And he OD'd, they gave him death-like symptoms. But he wasn't actually dead. Mm-hmm. And there was entertaining Father Stone, where there's this priest who's just very dead, <laughs> very deadpan. This priest is very deadpan. And he just has no life in him. So literally, literally, it is like drawing, you know, dr dr just drawing like water from stone trying to talk to this guy. And the awkwardness around him is hilarious. And honestly, I had an absolute fun time. This was an unexpected pleasure for me. I was told that you needed, like, um, I understand. And that's nothing I like about this 
One, I understand everything the characters are saying. The characters were clear. The volume was good. I it was the the the, the dialogue was very accessible for me in every way. I absolutely love that about it. And these actors were amazing. They were just always going for the performance. Oh, there's that one time where all of them accidentally were about to go and be Elvis for competition time. And I just love how these actors just go for it. I'm all into that. And again, I. I was told that you had to see it you have to it's good better to have a catholic background so you understand the jokes i, I suppose you're I guess you guys are right you, you must have to because i do have a catholic background i it, nothing went above my head i understood everything that was being referenced so i suppose i'm not the best judge but those people are probably right that you do have to have some type of knowledge of catholic and catholicism to probably understand this comedy maybe either way i understood everything and that's what i loved i understood everything thank you god i love that so much and speaking of experiences when it comes to the catholic church i'm going to give you some fun little because, um, history of my own. Because I was an altar server. If you are Catholic, you know what altar servers are. We help the priest when he is serving Mass. I was an altar server from 11 years old to 18. And some of the things I got up to at one time when I was about 13, I was not, I've never really drunk much at all. I don't really drink at all, you know, this, especially the, not at that age. And so one time I was on stage, on the altar, serving Mass in my altar server robes, and it was time for communion, and I drank some wine, went to drink the wine, accidentally did a huge gulp of it, put it down, immediately started feeling woozy, and I practically limped to my spot to sit down on the altar, and I began to see double and triple of everything. The lights were bright. Everything was just going in and out of focus. I had my first buzz while I was serving Mass, and I just sat there hoping it would pass before I, the service ended and I had to carry the heavy cross down the aisle, the heavy cross, which if I tilted it in one direction, it would fall and hit a congregation member. Another story I had as an altar server. One time, it was a huge mass being served. It was a special event where our um, our priest had like eight of us altar servers there. He was excited. He was happy. But there was something special going to happen for this mass. Our priest was going to have, instead of us ringing the bells, those of you who are Catholic know that when churches happen, every now and again, bells are rung during communion. Instead of ringing the bells, they're going to go hardcore classical, and they're going to knock this knocker back and forth. It's like when you knock on a door, except you flip it like this. That apparently was the original way you did it. Before there were bells being rung, you did a knocker. And I was not used to it. None of us were. We were told to have one of us knock it back and forth during after communion. So communion happens. Our priest is excited. He is happy. Eight altar servers on the altar at one time. Everything is going smoothly. Then communion happens. Time for someone to knock it back and forth. The server knocks it. All of us altar servers started bussing out laughing right there on the altar. But it was we 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 tried to suppress it, it was, which made it even more funny, I suppose. We just it was more like we were like, <coughs> and then it, we just all started doing it. And guys, I can confess to you all now, that was me who started it. So thank you guys so much for watching. You were wonderful. Did you watch Father Ted? Did you not? If you did, let me know below. It's a great thing. I would recommend it. Guys, thou art all blessed. Bye, guys.